Always great to catch up with the member for Flinders, Sam Telfer. And Sam, if the, the reports from Viterra and what's coming into the um, silos is to be relieved, weather and cropping conditions are actually pretty good compared to other parts of the state. Yeah, well, certainly pretty positive feel on the Air Peninsula in particular and, and the west coast of, of the EP is, is feeling like harvest is just around the corner. But obviously the the rain that we've had over the last week has, has slowed things down a bit, but everyone's fairly positive as long as the the season conditions uh, clear up and, and harvest goes well. It's going to be certainly a pretty challenging logistics season, Ricky. There's going to be a lot of tonnage that are needing to go to export facilities and, and there's going to be a lot of trucks on the road. Yeah, they certainly will. And uh, we're also seeing a warning from, well, it's an interstate uh, CFA in Victoria, but I think it's relevant across our cropping areas when it comes to the warning about spontaneous combustion uh, in haystacks. I think there was a fire at Penong. We don't know the cause of that yet, but it does seem that uh, wet hay can be a serious problem even when it's being baled. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something which farmers deal with every year. And we are coming now into fire danger season. The, The season started on November 1 and the West Coast and the Eastern Air Peninsula and, and the Lower Air Peninsula starts on the 15th. But you look around the state, even though there's been there's been rains, it does mean there's a, an increased fuel load. And I, I was actually able to get a briefing this week from the CFS on that increased fuel load and, and what steps they're doing to make sure people are prepared for this season and, and have a bushfire plan in place that they can enact when there's dangerous situations. Now, something came across my desk as we report in multiple states about the, the what is the equivalent there of the Patient Assistance Transport Scheme, or PATS, uh, where they're showing that they're actually celebrating that since earlier in the year they upped their rate from $0.22 cents to $0.40. Cents. I recall during the state election campaign, uh, the um, Liberals pledged that they would double it from 16 to 32 in SA. We're now less than half the PATS rate in New South Wales. What can we do to improve that? This is a question I've asked the Health Minister and and unfortunately it hasn't been a positive response. So when the former Liberal government was in place, there's a lot of changes to perhaps the, the, the scope of what people could claim. The uh, the process was simplified and, and also for for those of us in the in the far west where there's a lot of the time we have to be flying to our appointments, that process was, was broadened out and made easier. But you're right, during the campaign I've, I've managed to negotiate a commitment from the uh, then Liberal government. If they were re-elected, they would double the rate. But unfortunately, that wasn't mirrored by the Labor Party. And and subsequent questions to the minister have have really fallen on deaf ears. The minister's response was, well, we'll simply, uh, we prefer to have people have specialists in their own regions. Well, we know how that isn't happening, Ricky, and, and how challenging that is for people who have to travel significant distances. And in Flinders, the, the you know, most far-flung area of the state, that PAT scheme is vital for anyone wanting to get um, medical care and especially specialist care and needing to travel to either Wyala or, or Adelaide most of the time. It's well and good for the government to say, well, we would prefer people see specialists locally. And uh, as time goes by, what are we now? I guess it's eight months since they took office. They're some way into their term. They need to be turning something around there. Otherwise, it just it looks like they're forgetting people in the far-flung parts of the state yet again. Oh, absolutely. That flippant comment was offensive to me. And we've seen, obviously, the price of fuel skyrocket. The price of travel is skyrocketing. Uh, and the recompense for people who have to travel for specialist care hasn't followed suit. So it's something which I and my counterpart, the Shadow Minister for Regional Health, Penny Pratt, are going to be very forthright on and going to be advocating strongly for our regions. And it's, as I said, those of us who are further away which really feel the brunt of, of this policy not keeping up with the increased cost of fuel. Uh, That's a good point as well. Look, uh, with the SMS I got recently, I'd already voted in local government elections. It's a timely reminder of people to get their vote in, especially if they're down in the far southeast of the state. Yeah, and the the postal service is is challenged, so you've got to get them in quickly. Or there is the opportunity to drop your vote into your local council area. And you're right to point out in in the southeast there's the council election, but there's also in the district council of Grant and, and the city of Mount Gambier the the vote on whether uh, there should be an investigation into an amalgamation between those two councils. Now, this process uh, was 
a very rushed one. It was really only decided at the very last minute by the Labor Party that, that this should be something which be included. And, and the councils down there were blindsided. They, they, weren't, uh, they didn't have an undertaking that this was going to be happening. And, and straight away they were on the phone to me saying, where did this come from? You know, there isn't a, a significant grassroots push for this to happen. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm supportive of council uh, boundary reform, and the potential to look at things like amalgamation if if that is what the community wants and if that is going to be actually effective for community representation and, and for the, the ratepayers themselves. So I was really surprised when the Premier in particular, but also Minister Brock, you know, put this forward and, and uh, as I said, foisted it onto the communities of the South East. They've got the opportunity to put their vote in a yes or no, whether they want an investigation, but it's really not clear as to what the process that comes next is going to be. And Sam, amongst your colleagues there on North Terrace, when you all get together there in Adelaide, is there any chatter that this is a concerning step in the direction towards more amalgamations in regional areas? Well, certainly it's not just in North Terrace. It's the, it's the conversations which regional leaders and, and local government and community have been having with me all around the state saying, well, what is the... What is the reasoning behind this? Where is the justification? What does this mean for our region? And what does it mean for the people of the Air Peninsula? What does it mean for the people of, of the South East or the Riverland? Now, there's, there's so many unanswered questions by a, a, a thought bubble of a policy position, which uh, the, the Premier is sticking by, and, and we don't know what comes next. So this is why I'm watching very closely with not just the result of this plebiscite, but you know, what are the intentions of the Premier and the local government minister going forward. Well, someone a bit closer to it may well be the new president of the local government association, which is now called Lucendale Mayor, Erica Vickery. Is it going to be good to have a regional mayor in charge of the LGA for a while? I think that the process the LGA goes through to, to swap between a regional and metro mayor is a, a really healthy thing. Obviously, I spent uh, my term as, as a regional representative uh, president of the LGA, and, and it was... Uh, good to see the process go through uh, at the LGA and, and the president elected Erica Vickery, someone who has had a long experience in local government, someone who is, is, you know, she's OAM for her services to council and to her community, someone who's got a real vision and passion still for local government and I'm excited to be working with her as the shadow local government minister and certainly congratulated her at the LGA AGM that was held last week. Good on you, Sam Telfer, member for Flinders, and not only wearing that hat as shadow minister for local government, but also regional population growth. Have I got that right? Absolutely, and it's something which we're continuing to make sure is on, on front of mind for ministers in the government at the moment. Thanks again, Sam. We'll catch you again soon. Always a pleasure.